What I'm going to do today is describe to you all my background in public art. This is the area in which uh, I suppose I, I'm a specialist because I've been through many different phases of public art, starting with graffiti, uh, working my way up to what's called street art, and now into the realm of public art with permission. And through all three of those phases, I've, I've learned a lot and I've experienced a lot, and I've done a lot, and what I would like to do is share with you all those experiences. So hopefully you can learn something from it and look at the outside differently, because the outside, the outdoors, is what I consider kind of my playground or my canvas in a, in a, in a way. So what we'll do is, uh, we can turn the light off now. I'm just gonna bring you all way back to my beginnings, you know, to my early beginnings obviously with myself being here. That's pretty early. Now, I wish I had the bow tie to bring with me. I didn't bring the bow tie and the, and the nice shirt, so I apologize for my appearance now. But I looked good at one point, and th there I am. Um, I was born in Richmond, Virginia, which is obviously down here. This is just a map of the northeast part of the United States, and moved to Cincinnati, Ohio at a very early age, around one or two. My mother found work there, and we moved to Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati, Ohio, have you, have you ever been there before? Anybody been there? Okay. It's about a city of about 300,000, uh, about, th about three times the size of Stavanger, but for the United States, it's considered a small town, essentially. It's, it's rather conservative. And if you guys have been to those towns where people are kind of straight and narrow and kind of don't see how, uh, how things are or they don't, they don't look at things differently, this is the kind of city that Cincinnati is. But it's a city that was nice to grow up in. So that's uh, where I grew up, and I did all the normal things that ch children do, you know, play on, you know, animals, you know, like little toy animals that are yellow and have red hair, big eyes, <laughs> did all that. But I found that I was inclined to draw, as most kids do, but I drew a lot of urban landscapes, as you can see here. You know, uh, drawing was just something that came naturally to me. And as little, I look back on my drawings now, I see a lot of buildings things that you see outside, and also people, you know. I, I did all the, all the little kids' drawings and things like that, and of that nature. And, um, you know, I continued, continued, continued drawing up until the time when I was a teenager, you know, when this is a point where people either stop being artists or they continue being artists, you see. Artists are, are made or they're broken, usually at this age, most on, on, on the whole. So at the age of 15, you know, that's a very delicate age, right? We're all deciding who we are, what we want to be. We're concerned about who's around us and who we are seen with. Um, I was fortunate enough at this age to be accepted into a high school for public art. Now, do, it, it, do, you, do you call it high school in, in Stavanger, uh, in Norway, like a, a school that you go, go to at age 15 and 16? What's that called here? Is that, is that called high school? <laughs> Okay, so that, I went to a, uh, an art school specifically for that. And that was a very special thing, especially in Cincinnati, remember? Because Cincinnati is a very conservative uh, town. Now, of all the schools I went to, the School for Creative and Performing Arts was the most important because it, it taught me how to look outside of the environment. The teachers didn't teach us that. Guess who taught us that? The students did. And that's what's important in art school, is that the students around you are more important in some cases than the teachers. Now, the, where I would fault the School for Creative and Performing Arts is this. We were always taught in the School for Creative and Performing Arts that the masters of Western Europe were the, big, the greatest artists that we could attain to, you see. That was the standard by which we had to measure ourselves, was the work coming from Western Europe. And that's fine, we appreciated our Picassos, we liked Picasso, we thought he was fine. We liked Van Gogh, we thought he was cool. The ear story, we, we, we all loved that, you know? But we couldn't fully embrace that, why? Because we weren't from Western Europe and we weren't painting 150 years ago. So we were much more attracted to, guess what? The art that we see around us all the time, you see? We were interested in an art that we could contribute to, one that we thought we could have an influence on and one that we thought was happening now. You see, so naturally, that would be graffiti, right? So this was my 
entry into the world of public art, art that existed outside of the building, you know, on public, on public property, even private property. So what I did was, as a graffiti writer, that helped me be a part of a community, right? Because at the age of, at the age of 15, a teenager, an adolescent, we always want to be a part of a group, right? We want to be considered a part of the gang, kind of, right? But also be an individual. And that's what graffiti did for me. It helped me be a part of a group and also be my, my own man, essentially. And I did that by picking a tag name, which is common in graffiti. You pick a name, you invent for yourself, because you know no one is dumb enough usually to go out and write their own name. Some of them are, <laughs> some people are, um, you know. But traditionally, and this is what I was concerned with, the traditional root of graffiti, we pick a different name to go under. My name was Verbs. Now I didn't think if you asked me why I picked Verbs, I wouldn't know. Actually, I take that back. I do know. I saw a hip hop video with a big fat rap guy, and it said Verbs across the sweatshirt. And I thought that was the baddest thing that I could be writing at the time. So I've stuck with it. This is the mind of a 15-year-old, you see. This is the thinking. But that's fine, because I was, you know, at this age, you don't have to think further than that. So I wrote verbs not only in the black book, my little sketchbook. I wrote it in as many different places as possible, as a natural graffiti writer does, right? That's what a graffiti writer does. And also developed what's called a bubble letter, or a uh, smaller version of the name. You see, this is V-E-R, short for my name, Verbs. And I come up with a, with a, with a bubble letter, which is the traditional route for uh, you know, a, a writer so that they can project their name you know, in a large space. So as you can see, I'm just walking through the traditional route of, of uh, the writer. Now, trains are a big deal in Cincinnati, Ohio. Not the subway trains, because we didn't have the subway trains there, but um, what is called freight trains. You know, that, that was just a natural uh, thing to do. You would write graffiti on the wall and also have your graffiti on things that moved. Now, in Cincinnati, we have what's called the freight train, one that goes from coast to coast. Cincinnati is kind of in the middle of the country. If New York is here, Los Angeles is here, Cincinnati's somewhere in here. So for us writers in Cincinnati, Ohio, we wanted our work to be seen from coast to coast. New York to Los Angeles. So the freight trains were a, uh, a, a, a way to express that or to show that. So, so uh, someone, we could paint a train in Cincinnati. Two days later, it might be in you know, California somewhere. So this is how I grew up. This is how I was taught was the right way to, to do graffiti, was on trains, uh, buildings, so on and so forth. Now, here I am, 17 years old. I'm completely satisfied with my graffiti skills that I worked so hard to get. I am a traditional graffiti writer. I don't want to be anything else but a traditional graffiti writer. This is what I do. I'm a graffiti writer, right? Now, one element that changed that was this. My friend Andre Highland, who I had known since I was a kid, and I've been, he's, he's a filmmaker, and I made films with him as well. We have a collaboration. Have you guys ever collaborated with artists before? Worked together, kind of? It's a very interesting thing. Why is it interesting? Because you notice that you begin to do what they do, and they begin to do what you do as well, right? That's just naturally how you share things, artists share ideas. So Andre came along around 17, when we were about 17 years old, and he's a filmmaker. He decided now to make graffiti as well, along with me. But he wasn't interested just in doing his name, writing his name and putting it everywhere, right? As the traditional route goes. He was much more interested in kind of a Keith Haring type of graffiti where it changed every single time he went out. So we would go out one night, it would look completely different than the next night. Or it would change many different times during the night of writing graffiti. 